this time. We are going to do a quick running analysis on Let's Bet Gadea as she broke the 5,000 meter world record last October in a time of 14 minutes and 6 seconds. She was able to beat the previous world record by 5 seconds, which was set by Tierra Nishtababa 12 years ago. This was an incredible performance to watch and was truly an amazing achievement. Now, just by looking at the data, the race was paced perfectly as she ran the first two 1000 meter splits in 2 minutes and 51 seconds, followed by the third in 2 minutes and 49 seconds, then the fourth in 2 minutes and 48 seconds, and the last one in 2 minutes and 47 seconds. The reason why I say that is because for long distance races, it may be more beneficial to start slower and build up the pace, otherwise known as doing negative splits. However, when doing this, you don't typically want to see large spikes in the splits, but rather a very gradual progression, which was the case here. By doing so, this may maximize aerobic capacity and therefore her performance. Now, another thing to point out is the consistency in her movement. When some people run hard like in a race, it is not uncommon to see people fatigue toward the end of it and have a different running pattern when compared to the beginning of the race when they are fresh. In this race, by looking at different sections of it, you can see her consistency. She stays smooth and strong throughout the entire race. She almost made this look too easy, especially for a world record attempt. This speaks to not only her physical attributes, but also her mental discipline. Next, let's dive a little deeper and look at specific parts of her running. One thing to look at is her step rate or cadence, which is basically how many steps she can take in a minute. Here, she's going at a rate of 180 steps per minute. This type of step rate seems to be more commonly seen in elite distance runners. Now remember, just because this is the case, this does not mean that this is the best rate for any situation. This can be largely individualistic and can depend on the situation. For example, if you are running at a lower intensity pace, you may actually run at a step rate of around 160 to 170 steps per minute. Then, if you watch sprinters, they can have a much higher step rate that can be around 300 steps per minute. Based on this, your preferred step rate may change depending on the intensity, as well as be affected by other factors like terrain. The next thing people may point out is her foot landing. Here she lands closer to the heel area, which is known as a rear foot strike. Now some people consider this a bad thing, but that is not necessarily true. As I mentioned in a previous video, no foot strike is inherently bad as no research has consistently shown that one has a less likelihood of injury when compared to the other. Rather, there may be a different array of injuries that may occur on your preferred landing pattern over time. This may be due to the fact that the landing pattern itself does not change the amount of force placed on the body, but rather distributes it differently. In the case of rear foot striking, less load is placed on the calf muscle complex and more of it is around the knee when compared to a forefoot landing. Next, let's briefly take a look at the front view. First, let's start at the top with the arm swing. Here, she presents with a pretty smooth and rhythmic arm swing. There does not seem to be any abnormal asymmetries between each side, which may clue into asymmetries in the legs. Next, let's move on to the hips during this mid stance phase. Referencing one of my previous videos in this phase, you can look to see if there is any excessive hip dropping, which does not occur here. She seems to present with pretty good hip coordination and control. Also, you can look at the knee position. Here, she does not really present with any abnormal knee movement, with the knee staying pretty much in line with the hips. Now, probably the more interesting thing to see here is the feet. Initially, this seems pretty wild. It seems like there is a crazy amount of overpronation occurring at the foot to make this happen. However, this may not be the case. There was a similar incident that occurred with Joshua Cheptegei, but this picture is closer with more detail to see what may be going on. Instead of the foot itself going to overpronation, it seems like the foot is slipping to the side within the shoe. This is important to understand as this is an example showing how the shoe can actually impact your visual assessment of an athlete running. Now, I can go more in depth on shoes, but I will probably save that for another time. And that's all the time I have for this quick running analysis. Overall, Gidea is an incredible athlete. 
She has already made some pretty big accomplishments in running, and I am really curious what she will continue to do. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts as well as any questions you may have. And as always, thank you for watching.